My name is Simone Yatch, and I am uh, quite the expert in the relationship between humans and technology. And I will be traveling across Europe to see what this digital transformation actually means. Sometimes data can be the difference between life and death. So I'm heading to Barcelona to learn more about what it actually takes to digitize our healthcare. Welcome, Simon, <laughs> to the Hospital of Santa Creu and San Pau. Thank you. This was founded in 1401, more than 600 years. During these six centuries, that happened a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And this campus is a new strategy that we have created, focusing on innovation and technology. Here in Hospital San Pau, our aim is to offer the most complex solutions with the most human treatment. And for that, technology is key. For instance, in cardiology, we have done the first heart transplant. We created the first emergency services in the country. We are very proud as well of our neurosciences. And now we are transforming all our uh, information systems. Because before, like all the data you had was just the notes that your doctor took. Exactly. Right? And now you have millions of data points on every patient. I mean, the more technology you have, the more data it creates and the more technology you need to manage all of that data. Exactly. We now have the tools to help us literally navigate our own bodies. But you know what's cutting edge? Being able to explore the insides of our bodies without having to use any cutting edges. Let us show you what happens after the acquisition of the CT images. Mm -hmm. So here you can see the heart of the patient. This is the digital twin of the patient's heart. Yeah. To be able to do simulation or to do what's called virtual surgery. It's like VR, OER. Let me show you here the heart, 3D printed. Mm -hmm. This is life size, is one to one. Are hearts this big? Uh, depends on your size. In normal life, the only way you would ever get to see your organs is if something goes very, very wrong. <laughs> but now it's like you get to <laughs> see it. And if you want to do like that simulation, each patient can take one terabyte of, of, of oh! data. How many patients do you have? <laughs> Um, 200,000 patients per year. Imagine that. So is this mostly to help the patients understand or is this also helpful for the doctors? Both. When you have to explain to the patient, mm -hmm. when you touch it, they can understand it much better. On the other side, doctors use as a trainer. Mm. You can get a lot of repetition yeah. and make a lot of mistakes. Without and, risk, yeah. no? Okay, Simon, now we will go through the AR journey. The motions are, get your hand and grab it. Close your hand, now you can move it. That's cool. I feel too powerful for my own good. I shouldn't be able to hold somebody's heart in my hand. It's kind of like uh, taking an online course in heart surgery. And I think my doctor's license will arrive in the mail any day now. Can you see? Yeah. So just enter VR. Oh, oh, wow, there's stuff in here. <laughs> oh, interesting. This is the aortic valve. I'm a piece of blood. <laughs> and I'm just going through. The corneal arteries? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I go out here, I assume. Oh, no. He lifted it above your head. It's not good for your back. <laughs> oh, oh, hey. When I tell you that you have a special place in my heart, this is where I mean, right there. Yes, in the left atrial appendage. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, this is from 1404. I mean, it's just crazy that it's equal amount of time from 1404 to now, as from now to like 2600. This would be like somebody in 2600 looking through my MRI scans being like, whoa, that's so old. Here we are in our data center. 
Let me introduce our IT director. It's David. David Simon. Hi, Hi, nice to meet you. Oh wow, it's a lot of they're talking. Bueno, es la sala de servidores. Nos basamos en las cabinas de almacenamiento Huawei que nos permiten realizar esa transformación. And it's a total new world for us. Es aquí en un hospital tienen que estar en un entorno más seguro y protegidos ante cualquier ciberataque, por ejemplo. It's hard because you both need to be able to access it very quickly and for a lot of people to have access to it, but also keep it safe. Para nosotros la confidencialidad de los datos de pacientes es algo muy importante que encriptando todos estos datos. What happens if something breaks? We have another data center in the cloud. So yeah, plan A, plan B, plan C, exactly. plan D. Yeah, it's interesting to look at this and be like, they're like, not humans, but so much data from humans. I mean, from probably thousands and thousands of people and got it all here. Without this, we cannot survive. I know my body, like it's me, I'm in it. But what I realized is that knowing your body doesn't necessarily mean that you understand it. Fortunately, we're constantly shedding these little bits of information and it's everything from our DNA to the air that we exhale or how many steps we've taken in a day. And interpreting our body data is kind of like closing the language barrier between you and you. Just like having a heart to heart with yourself.